Welcome back, interior designers of Tamriel. I'm Cal, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make some of your very own basic structures, just like I did in my Hall of the Lunar Champion. This should enable you to create a custom market square similar to the one that I did for that home. I'm sure you'll find the process surprisingly easy once you know what to look for. Now, when crafting custom structures in ESO, there are a handful of furnishing styles that are particularly useful. In my opinion, the Elsewhere set was really the first that actually started setting us up for success here. The small platform is great for filling in gaps, creating patios, and short ramps. The larger platform makes a great foundation, floor, wall, or large roof. But there are some key pieces missing here. No good doorways, no doors or windows, and limited roofing. The Greymore theme expanded on this collection with a ton of good stuff. Of course, you'll probably recognize the lean-to in the back here. I make heavy use of it for my roofing. And then you've got stone walls of varying heights and curvatures. Blackwood added even more, including not just the standard structure elements, but also some towers and more castle elements, as well as these cool window boxes. High Isle continued that trend, adding even more great structure pieces and our first window element that can be used to actually create custom structures where you can see through to the outside from the inside and vice versa. I also love these new platform pieces. They make pretty good roofs, floors, and ceilings. I do occasionally make use of some pieces from other themes, including these Merkmeyer ramps and some of the Markarth walls but they don't typically include as wide a range of structural pieces as the newer stuff. Ever since Elsewhere though, each expansion has included a set of excellent structure furnishings. Be sure to keep an eye out for the following styles as they will form the core of your custom building library. Elsewhere, Solitude, Leowin, and High Isle. Some pieces mix and match better than others, but I prefer to try and stick within a theme for each building I create. All right, so now that you know what styles you're looking for, let's build out some quick examples. I'm gonna show you how to build one simple structure with each style here at my Cold Harbor Surreal Estate Home. Speaking of, did you know that you can buy this manor size home with gold after you complete the main storyline? I only realized that a couple of months ago. It's one of the best properties for custom buildings, although the lighting is a bit gloomy, hence all the beacons I've put up. All right guys, let's get started here with the elsewhere pieces. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there aren't really good roofing materials in elsewhere or doorways or doors for that matter, but you can still get some basic structures going. So I'm gonna start with this uh, floor here, this masonry bit. And uh, this is a crafted piece. And then these stairs, I actually basically just wanna create a small structure where uh, you can get up to a second level here. So you can see these stairs, I've got a little bit of flexibility here on how high they can be. I'm gonna set them right here at the front. And I like to kind of just rough things in here to start, and then I'll tweak the pieces to get them just where I want them afterwards. So I want to create a downstairs, I wanna create a downstairs area here. So let me go ahead, and I'm gonna go ahead and put these walls away. I'm gonna use those in a minute. So let's go ahead and just snap these guys into place here. I actually don't think I need the wooden large either. Sometimes it's difficult at the start to get things kind of in place. And I do want to be able to access this bottom room, but we're not going to have a great doorway. So I think what I need to do is just create a little bit of space here. And sometimes it's easier to go into the precision editing to actually get things right where you want them, right? So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. And you guys can kind of see as I'm working on things here. All right, so I've got the first floor kind of roughed in here. Uh, you can see I need to move the, the actual floor over so that it covers it, but there's no way to get into this, this basement right now. And uh, I think the easiest way to solve this with elsewhere pieces exclusively is actually to remove one of these walls and then uh, add a couple of pieces here from my inventory. And this is the only add-on that I'm gonna be using in this video. It's coming to the base game later this year, I believe. Uh, but it basically just allows you to sort your uh, furnishing items by their location. So the ones that I just picked up are readily available here. So let's go ahead and I think I want to just sink that in a little bit and we'll get that close but not perfect. And then we'll go into precision edit mode to get it just right. 
and let me go ahead and move this floor back a bit while we're here. And again, we're not trying to get everything perfect in this video. I just kind of want to give you guys a, an idea of how to use some of these structure pieces to create custom structures in ESO. I think that needs to go down just a little bit so I can run up it. Perfect. All right, so now we've got these wooden small platforms. And these are some of my favorite pieces to create floors with. They're just about the right thickness. And uh, I use them in almost every custom structure at one point or another but they stack up real easy like that. You can line them up pretty easily. And, uh, oop, that's not gonna support me. Let me just scooch that back a bit. There we go. All right, so now we've got our second floor started here. And this is where I'm going to go ahead and grab, not that giant platform, but these walls. If we rotate it like that, that's actually gonna be a pretty good fit here. So let me go ahead and just put that down. We can put one over here. There's a great tool here, which is the, um, in Precision Edit, if you just hit H, I believe by default, it'll straighten it out. And then that just makes it a little bit easier to... So I'm just trying to get these lined up a little bit. So now I'm hiding part of this inside that wall. Let me try just sliding it over a bit. Yeah. I like to hide the seams whenever possible. It'll just make your structures look a little bit nicer. So that's pretty close run around to the other side here I think we just tweak the uh, rotation just a little bit now we can sink that way down and actually have like a reasonably height a reasonable height wall I guess so we're hiding a bunch of this in the ground but we've sort of created a second tier here just a little uh, patio of sorts on the second level uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a mental note here so that's the Y value is 36866. I'm gonna go ahead and move this one down to the same. There we go, all right, so now those should be the exact same height. And uh, let's go ahead and move it back just a little bit. All right, let me get this cleaned up just a little bit. I'm just going to go into precision edit mode and tweak the placement of everything so it's nice and plump. are in pretty good shape here so we've got this nice little ground level storage room and then you can run up these stairs to a second floor little balcony this would be this would make a great crafting area or maybe a place to put some merchants or other house guests uh, one thing I think I want to do is actually move this fall move this wall forward a little bit now before I move this forward I do want to link these two this is a feature that I only recently discovered but if I go ahead and Click the link button on the lower one and then link that upper one as a child and confirm it. Now when I precise edit the bottom, the top moves with it. So let's go ahead and slide both these up a little bit. And basically I just want to slide them up just enough until we get that nice corner seam back here. And I'm going to cover that up with either another uh, masonry pillar or maybe one of these wooden pillars. All right. Let's go ahead and grab one of these guys and just bring it over and see if I can cover up this seam here with it. All right, so there is the Elsewhere custom structure all done and dusted. 
and uh, I can go ahead and potentially link all of these pieces together and then move it as a complete structure. So once I get done with the rest of these, I can potentially link them all, link them all individually and then move them to create sort of a, a little market square area. All right, moving on to the solitude pieces from the Greymoor expansion. Uh, I've actually got eight of these solitude walls and the solitude pieces are actually pretty cheap in comparison to the rest of these to craft because they use a base game style material. Uh, so you should be able to find these relatively cheap on guild vendors or uh, if you pick up the uh, furnishing plans yourself, you can craft these relatively inexpensively. Now all of these pieces do require the um, crafting materials like mundane runes or uh, you know heartwood and those can run you uh, and those can be pretty expensive but uh, it does help that this just requires the like base I think it's the Norse style the Norse style material uh, whereas some of these other ones like elsewhere and especially high isle require a harder to uh, acquire style material so they'll be a little bit more expensive so for this one like I said I've got these eight solitude wall stones uh, I want to create sort of a little tower here. I'm going to throw this fireplace inside. I'll probably put this stall out front, and then I'll have the well out front as well. Uh, we do have a door, thanks to the uh, solitude theme. So we will have a front door on this tower. And uh, I may make use of this larger wooden platform as well. I think I'd like, I'd like to build it on the wooden platform. Actually, it doesn't make much sense. All right, skip that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a few of these pieces and get started. These four, oh my gosh, let me get to them. These four stone wall, these four post stone walls are going to sort of be our corners and cover up our ugly corner seams. Then I'm gonna use the eight regular walls, stone walls to uh, create the, uh, the walls of the tower. Uh, and then I'm gonna top those uh, corners with these pillar bases. And then we're going to throw the lean-to on top and give it sort of an open second floor with a bit of a roof on it. All right, let's do it.
there is the completed solitude structure. So we got a little bit of a tower here. I think there's some cleanup that you could do to make things meet up a little bit nicer up there at the top. Uh, a little bit of an audible here to add this uh, merchant stall here as sort of a second floor landing. But never forget that in most of these cases, all of the ugly seams can be covered up with vines. So I really like to use the vines that you can purchase in elsewhere. And I keep a ton of them stocked just for situations like these. So just throw this up here and uh, it's going to cover up most of that ugly seam there and uh, just make this look a little bit more complete. You gotta be careful to make sure they don't poke out too much, but uh, you can hide a lot of your mess with those and still create these cool spaces on the second floor. Um, but like I said, I think there's probably uh, some slightly better pieces that you could use to make that all match up nicely, or you could just add a couple more of the Solitude Shed lean-tos and have it overhang a little bit on each side, like this. Let's go ahead and just slide it over for a sample. So if you just did that and then added a second one on the other side, you'd actually have a pretty nice roof line there and you'd be covering up more of those seams. Uh, I may make that update before the end of the video. This character just can't craft anymore. So, all right, moving on to Leowin. I think this is probably one of the most complete themes that we have in the game. There are multiple doors, doorways. You've got these nice turrets that can be used to sort of cap ends and really complete the look. There's multiple steps. Uh, we also got the window boxes, which are nice, great for hiding ugly seams. Uh, there's even some of these canopies and, and merchant stalls that you can use similar to what I did with the solitude stuff. Uh, I grabbed this palisade back here. This is actually from the home goods merchant in Leowin itself. Uh, and I think that that can be useful as well. Create, uh, you know, garden walls. You could probably use it as flooring. Uh, if you want to create maybe like a little patio space, that'd work. Uh, these wainscoted walls are great for interiors, less so on the exteriors, but I've used them as exteriors as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together. I'm thinking I'm going to have uh, a bit of a castle wall with the turrets on the ends. Uh, this will lead to either a garden or maybe a basement. And then on the second level, I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, the wainscoted walls to create a little room or you know like a one bedroom apartment uh, against the castle wall so let's get to work
together with the Leyland set. So you can see we've got a couple of the turrets flanking a little platform. I went ahead and used, I believe it's the elsewhere platform there to create the second level uh, floor. Uh, you could easily add another castle wall in the back here to close off that the back of that space. We've got a little uh, fireplace downstairs and then the smallest room ever on the second floor. But you could definitely fit a little storage center in here or maybe a crafting table a merchant something cool like that and this is easily expandable as well so if you've doubled the, the the number of pieces here you could easily double the size of this room uh you've got a little space out here for maybe a little merchant area or some other decor uh there are definitely low walls that you could add along the side here to create uh, a bit of a balcony um, and of course, adding more turrets always works as well. So just a little something that you could do with the Leowin set plus one elsewhere piece. And this door is actually a solitude door as well. Although ironically, it doesn't fit any of the solitude pieces. <laughs> All right, moving on to our last theme. This is the high all theme. And uh, I'm just gonna be making a little townhouse or row home here. This is very similar to many of the buildings that I did for my market square. I actually used this a uh, fancy tile piece as the flooring out there in the um, Hall of the Lunar Champion. And then I used a ton of these pieces as well to create my, my townhomes around the square, mainly because they go really well with the single window piece we have available to us. These platforms are also super useful. They make pretty good roofs. Um, the thing that I always struggle with with the roofs is we don't have a good piece to fill in uh, you know, that, that little triangle there on the side, right? So there's always kind of an opening. There's a little bit of an opening. What I did was I used this Gonflon uh, high aisle turret to kind of close in that gap, but then you get some weird seams on the inside. So I'm going to play around with this and see if I can come up with a pretty good solution here. Uh, what you can do with just, you know, a handful of pieces from the high aisle set. Let's get to it. Alright guys, these structures are just about done, but before I give you a tour, I did want to add a couple final touches. 
Now I'm not going to fully furnish them in this video since we're mostly talking about the custom buildings themselves, but I can't resist adding a couple pieces here. All right, guys, these are all done. Let's take a quick tour and I'll show you the interiors of each of the buildings I've constructed behind me. All right, starting off with the elsewhere build here. Now, for this one, I did go with the open concept just because there aren't any good roofing materials in the elsewhere collection. Uh, but you can see I've dropped the banker and merchant NPCs up here. This top patio could easily serve as a good place to put them or some crafting stations. And then underneath, you have some good space for storage. So this is a pretty easy one to construct. Not too expensive, although uh, I believe it will require a little bit of the shimmering sand, which is not the cheapest. Um, but most of these are constructed. Most of these are crafted furnishings. The banner is an achievement furnishing, and then those elsewhere pillars right there, those wooden ones, are actually from the home goods merchant. So easy to pick up. Same thing with the vines, which I, like I mentioned earlier, I like to use to cover up any unsightly seams. All right, moving right along here to the solitude build. Uh, again, mostly crafted. Uh, the trees and the vegetation are, of course, from the home goods vendor, so easy to pick up as well. I did go ahead and expand the roof here, so we've got four of the solitude lean-tos up there on the roof. Uh, and then I decided to keep this little secondary entrance, which was not part of my original plan, but I like how it gives access to the second floor here. Another good spot to tuck away. Uh, you could do a bedroom or something like that. Obviously more crafting stations, something more interesting. Uh, just sort of a secret little spot there. This is the Merkmeyer ramp, which is an extremely useful furnishing for custom builds. Uh, it gives you probably the steepest staircase that you can get in the game. Inside, I've got uh, a little fireplace and uh, not a lot of room here, but again, this is expandable. This is something that you could easily, you know, double the number of furnishings that you're using here and make yourself a much larger tower. All right, here we are with the Leowin build. And unfortunately, there is no good Leowin banner that would that's sized appropriately for a build like this. So uh, I didn't get to adorn it with the banner, but I do have the, the bird merchant and banker here. So on the first floor, you've got sort of an open air cellar, basement space. Uh, I think this would make a pretty cool blacksmith shop or something like that. Uh, I've gone ahead and tucked another fireplace in here. And then if we go outside, you can see here, we can go up to the second floor and this is a great space for maybe a bedroom. Ooh, that is unsightly right there. I would definitely take a furnishing and uh, cover up that window there, or you could actually swap this wall for the non-windowed style. For some reason on PCNA, they've been extremely hard to find for a reasonable price, so I keep using the ones with the windows. But uh, you got a little patio out here, a couple of window boxes, and uh, this one came together really well, I think. Um, it is a mess on the back, so you're gonna need to tuck this away in a corner somewhere where you're not gonna be able to see the back here. And I did come up with a pretty good roof solution. So that is uh, from the Elsewhere theme, the Elsewhere set. Uh, and if we get far enough away here, you can see it's stepped back. So I think it works pretty well as a roof. And uh, at this size, there's a little bit of, a, of, of an overhang over there, but it's not too bad. So all in all, uh, I really like how this turned out. And it's something that you could easily sort of like, you know, combine these into uh, or attach these to one another, you know, move this whole thing over, just slide it over. There we go. Just slide this guy over. And now you've got almost a, a little like, town square started right because the, the buildings are built together and now nobody can get back there and see all the unsightly seams that you left in the back all right finally this is the high aisle build and let me get out of build mode here real quick so this is the high aisle, high aisle build uh, i've gone with just a one room um townhome here got a window on the side and then uh in this corner i've tucked the start of the stable so uh, I think this works out pretty well. And if you were sort of building a wall around the whole town, this is something that you could do in one of the corners. I did use some Markarth pillars here since the high all set doesn't have any good pillars and uh, created this little garden space over here. These are, I believe it's the, yeah, large mossy limestone boulder flipped upside down. Uh, really useful if you wanna create a garden space and add some grass in a spot where you don't have any. Around the back on this one, it is in pretty good shape. Uh, looks like the the roof is poking through just a bit, but I could probably fix that without too much trouble. So there you go, guys. Four custom builds that you guys can use for inspiration for your next home design. 
Uh, these were pretty fun to put together, and I'm actually really pleased with how they turned out. Uh, I do think they are probably a step up from what I did in my Hall of the Lunar Champion, but of course, uh, I was limited with furnishings there. So, if you have custom buildings in mind, uh, I would strongly recommend uh, building them first, but you always have to save a few furnishing slots to actually decorate them on the inside. These are a little sparse right now. Now, with that being said, that is going to do it for this video. I do appreciate you guys watching this one. I'm sure it turned out to be pretty long, uh, but hopefully it was worth the time. All right, guys, I think I'm going to call it there today. Thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate your support. If you'd like to join my Patreon, I've got some bonus content over there. Be sure to click the link on screen now. If you'd like to build one of these buildings to spec, I'll go ahead and put the furnishing list in the comments down below. Feel free to ask any questions you may have, and I will do my best to answer them. All right, guys, I will see you all for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.